So today we're going on a sketchbook tour. Oh, quick word of warning, this little guy actually has a lot of pages in it and I have a lot of stories to tell from the sketches that I've done in this. So you might want to put on a cuppa, as we say in Australia, make a cup of tea and sit back and relax while you watch. Okay, let's go on an art adventure. G'day guys, welcome back to an art adventure. My name is Christopher and today I get to share something really special with you. It's my first ever completed sketchbook. So I've been painting for about six years now, but I've worked in a whole bunch of different sketchbooks and I often paint just on uh, separate pieces of watercolor paper. So it's taken me six years to actually get to the point that I've completed a sketchbook. This one is quite small. It's a Pentallic Aqua Journal and you can see it's about the size of my hand here. Let me get a ruler. That means it's 13 and a half by nine centimeters. It's five inches by three inches from memory. Yeah, just last night I finally finished it. So uh, let's dive in. Uh, first of all, we've got the cover. So I've just used some Sharpie Metallic uh, markers to draw a design as well as an acrylic marker I got in a recent art snacks box to do this little design of a dragonfly and to write sketchbook one on it. Um, I figure as I complete each sketchbook I'll number them because I've been working in so many. This isn't actually the first sketchbook I started but it's the first sketchbook that I finished. Okay, and so, oh, just other features if you're considering getting this sketchbook. It has a really good durable cover. It has a place for a pen or a brush with an elastic uh, band here, and it has a pocket at the back. All right, on the first page, I have just put my personal information. So I've just covered it up with a post-it note and scribbled over it. And then I have on this, um, I guess introductory paper, but it's not actually the watercolor paper. I've just put some stamps from a Muji store in, somewhere in Tokyo, I forget which Muji store. And on the other side of that, I've got another stamp. This one is from Matsumoto Castle and I've just colored it in a little bit. Beside that, I have my very first actual page. So this is a watercolor sketch on the watercolor paper and it is also of Matsumoto Castle. And I only had about 20 minutes for this sketch and I wanted to just keep things simple so it's mostly reds and yellows. Next up is a double spread. So yeah, it might be a little difficult to make out the features of this. Lots of colors being used here and I've done a lot of different birch trees in different colors. And this is in a forest on Norikura Mountain in Japan. And this was around autumn or fall. And uh, the colors are really beautiful in Japan around that time. If you ever get a chance to go out into the countryside in the mountains during the autumn in Japan, around October, November, it's really quite magical. And this is also from Norikura Mountain. It's a waterfall that I hiked to. You can see on the top page here, there are misty mountains in the background and some trees, then the foreground hills and the river stream leading down into the waterfall with some autumn leaved trees dropping their leaves into the water. This part I'm not so happy with, but I was quite happy with this. It was one of my first attempts to, to draw something like a waterfall. Okay, next up I have a painting of um, a nautilus, but it's not based on a real nautilus. It's a glass sculpture nautilus. And this was at the Sua Glass Museum, a really cool place to visit in Nagano if you're able to get there. And I should have said before I began this tour that these sketches were mostly done over, I think three or four years from a, mostly in 2016 and 2017. And during that time I lived in Japan. I actually lived in Japan from 2010 to the beginning of 2018. So many of these sketches are going to be of places and things that I've seen during my time in Japan. And this was a watercolor sketch that I've then gone over with some color pencils. And this 
glass museum has all sorts of really amazing sculptures and if you ever get a chance to go by there I super recommend it. This next drawing. This is also from Norikura Mountain and so here you can see that I don't always stick to following my sketchbook in sequence. I'll jump back and forth so I went to here before these sketches even occurred from memory. But anyway this was also from the hiking day that I went to the waterfall. After towards the end of the hike stopping for some ice cream and while enjoying the ice cream there were some thistles that were growing right beside me and so I began to sketch them and then later on I painted it and I often do that with sketches. I'll start them somewhere or complete the drawing and then I'll finish the, the painting part some other time. The other thing I guess I want to say here is how great something like this is for bringing back memories way more than a photograph or video even. Sitting down and drawing something just traps the images and the memories so strongly into your mind that it's such a great thing to be able to look back at this and think about like even what the weather was like that day, who I was with, what I was doing. It's really cool. Okay, next we have some anime characters that are quite famous, the yokai cats or something like that. I don't really know that anime so well and I just modified them from some advertising that I saw in my local konbini, which means the local convenience store. I think I might have taken a photograph and then sketched them out later, but I changed the colors and the whole background and the arrangement and all those sorts of things. And then next we have um, a painting I'm really pleased with. I put quite a bit of time and effort into this one and it's of some goldfish swimming over marbles from the art aquarium at Nihonbashi. Every summer at least that I know of there is an exhibition that happens and it's happening right on to, up until this weekend this year in Nihonbashi in Tokyo where you can go to the Koreeda shopping center and there is this art aquarium display that's just amazing there. They have all these incredibly complicated tanks with lights and fish inside of them and also audio visual displays. I might uh, insert some video that I took The fish will just be swimming around on the walls or in the tanks or uh, throughout different sculptures. It's such a cool atmosphere. You can probably also see some of the silver glinting on the scales. This is from the silver Holbein watercolor paint. Next up we have something that I'm not so pleased with. So we have this anime girl here that didn't turn out so well but what I am happy with and what was the main focus for this sketch were the crystals and space galaxy that I was tinkering with. And so I've put some sparkling glitter paint on here. This glitter paint is from a Wink of Stella brush pen. The glittery effect of it. So if you've never seen one before they've become pretty popular but here is one here and they're like a brush pen but it's already filled up inside with glittery particles in it. Definitely only get it as like a, a kind of splurge thing but they're fun to play with. So next I have a rooster and this rooster is from um, a piece of fabric that I saw at a festival or a matsuri called the Some no Komichi which is the fabric festival. This is held every February or so in Nakai area just near Shinjuku in Tokyo and there is a canal that runs through the Nakai suburb and in the winter of the February they string kimono fabrics all the way along the whole canal for hundreds of meters and they flip and twist and flap in the breeze. It's really quite beautiful and all the shops in that shopping area hang out their fabric cloths in front of the shops. These are called Norin 
And if you're interested in seeing something like that in one of my former videos, which I'll link or put a card up, um, you'll see me draw a soba shop with the norin or cloth hanging in front of it. But anyway, one that took my eye was this one of a rooster. And you can see these lines here. They're actually from twists and folds in the fabric, but I stylized it. I'm really happy with the kind of pastel tones I have achieved by burnishing over the white pencil on top of it. And then the next sketch is also from Somai no Komichi, I think from the same year. And this is one of the times where I actually put down information. And as time has gone on, especially with bigger sketchbooks, I've started to do that more and more. And if you can take a moment on your sketch to write down even just the location and date, makes a really big difference for remembering it. So you might remember lots of details, but dates and sometimes places you always forget, particularly dates. So you can see here, uh, this is in Japanese, but it's on the 26th on a Friday of February to the 28th on a Sunday of February in 2016. Really love the effect between the turquoise and the opera rose. The Holbein opera rose has just got a real punch to it. Next I have a building from the street that I used to live in in Tokyo in Shiro Kanadai suburb. And this is a cool um, dome designed building that has some sort of copper patina metal on the outside or at least a replica of that and it's gone green with the patina over time and some interesting windows on each level and I really like the the burst of red on the fabric that hangs over the main entrance doorway. And here I start to practice drawing when I'm on public transport and I was taking the bus home from work this day and let me read this is the, in Japanese the 11th of the fifth month so the 11th of May 2016 oh, and it's also in English there I didn't notice and then this was on bus 86 one of the buses that I'd often take home and I remember I drew this sketch out in somewhere between five and seven minutes it had to be quite quick and it's one of the first times where I drew someone on public transport and it also I think came out well Except for the eye, I had to correct that a little bit. And so that encouraged me to start doing more of that in my sketchbooks. Uh, my workplace had a Catholic church or chapel on it. And this is one of the statues that are there in front of some stained glass. For the silver, a Sakura jelly roll that has a metallic sheen to it and same for this outline, it's also a sakura jelly roll, but this one is some sort of glitter pen. This is a copy from a poster that I saw, I think on a subway train or at the subway station. And I just thought it was a really cool concept and it was encouraging facilities and resources for the blind in Japan. And the poster design though was really bright, different colors but I decided to go with a, a version that was more um, subdued or darker tones. Uh, next up, I just have a jellyfish swimming around in corals. I think I was playing with some color pencils on watercolor. And here I was probably painting and drawing around May and in that time in Tokyo, the azalea flowers or tsutsuji begin to flower all over Tokyo and it's such a beautiful time with the weather warming up and the flowers all over the place. I remember I painted this on my walk back from work one day and just near a crossing bridge over the road there were a bunch of flowers growing in a little community garden or maybe they were even wildflowers I'm not sure but I really liked the flowers that were there so I just stopped and drew and painted them. And this is a fail sketch and it was done in a real hurry on the bus. I tried to draw a passenger. She was a rather old lady and she got up after one stop so I think I only had like two minutes to sketch her. So all around it was kind of difficult and I didn't get the proportions right with the black pen or ink pen and so we'll just move on. 
Uh, next, we're back in the chapel from my workplace, but a different view of a different statue, maybe the Virgin Mary from memory, but I'm really happy with how this design came out. And I actually only finally did the colors of this the other day, um, tried out some inks on the background. Inks look good on this paper, but they're not good to use in this paper because it bleeds through to the other side. I don't know if you can see it up here, but this paper is fantastic, but you can see the ink has bled through. The watercolors never do that, but inks, or at least the inks that I was using, the Marabou Aqua inks, they bleed through. They're really cool inks though. And I don't know if you can see it, sparkle action going on again here at the stained glass window. And this is from some jelly roll pens. Okay, next is from Aoyama Cemetery. I remember going here and sketching with my friend, also named Christopher, on this day and getting bitten by like a million mosquitoes. It's got a really cool vibe to it, this cemetery. It's really ancient with um, some tombstones and statues that are hundreds of years old. Okay, this sketch I did at the Ebisu Photography Museum and once a year they had the winners of the newspaper phot photography of that year and this was from a nature study um, or one of the winners from the nature category. Don't know if you can see the glitter effect of it that well. Uh, this is a sketch of two people I did one day on the train or subway on the way back from Ueno to Meguro and Yamanote is the name of the big loop train that goes all around Tokyo. Um, both of them were actually Japanese from memory but hilariously neither of them actually even look remotely Japanese. I'll have to work on that. A view from a hotel that I was staying at near Ise or Ise Peninsula. I was going down to see the Ise Shrine and this hotel overlooks a, a kind of beachy area within a bay where there's uh, huge ferries. The middle of this page is ruined from watercolour paper that leaks through from another page and that's a problem with one of these smaller books if you're using lots of water. And here we have some uh, Japanese stamps. I showed these actually quickly in a previous video. So these stamps come from Mikimoto Po Island. Here it is in English and then the same written in Japanese. And all throughout the island there's little locations hidden with stamps and you get a treasure map to locate the stamps and stamp them. And then I've come back and put watercolour washes on top of them. You're actually meant to have a stamp book. So this is a stamp book and many 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 Japanese people have these stamp books. They often come with the cover here you can see and then there are accordion pages that will flip open and they have a smooth paper inside of them and this is where you're meant to put your stamps as you go from place to place. Okay so just quickly through Mikimoto Coal Island and the stamps. Oh, this is the Tori Gate or the entrance gate to the island. This is the statue of the founder of the island who started the pearl industry. And the first one in Japan from memory and now Japan's quite famous for its cultured pearls. One of the first places, maybe the first place in the world to start culturing pearls. And then we have the pearls themselves and here we have a replica of a crown um, covered with pearls. I think it was given to a royal family in either England or Europe. Uh, one of the shrine buildings, the divers, uh, they go down to get the pearls and from memory they're always women and then that's it. Uh, this is some irises that I did on a visit to Hakone, a beautiful area about two hours outside of Tokyo if you can get a chance to go there. 
This was also mostly done in watercolour pencils. It's of the little train in Hakone that takes you up and down the mountain because it's quite steep. Uh, here we have some daffodils or narcissus that were growing in the gardens where I used to work actually. This is of the hydrangea festival that always happens every year in the summertime in July, June and July I think but mostly July in Kamakura or the areas around there and this is from Kita Kamakura and it's a Buddha statue with the hydrangeas growing on it. Kamakura is really quite famous so maybe you've heard of it or been to it if you've been to Japan. It has a gigantic uh, Buddha statue that can even go inside. Okay we have a train sketch this is from the Chiyoda Sen or the Chiyoda line and just a passenger that was trying to sleep on the train so I sketched him. Just a salary man. Uh, this sketch is from a girl on a poster and she was in a poster just hanging in the train that I was sitting on so I just drew from that and modified it a little bit. And here we jump forward in time to this year. This is in DC, Washington DC where I now live. This is a church in Eastern Market during the winter time still so no leaves on the trees and just really cool to see this sort of architecture after living in Japan. And so that was an empty page that I must have left because now we go back to Japan. Um, firstly, these sketches are from Kyoto. This is from a little tea house near, near the water temple. I'm trying to think of its name. Kiyomizu Dera. And this tea house is just one street away and has a beautiful little garden. And this is Kiyomizudera itself. Most of it unfortunately was covered up, uh, being renovated, but this part of the temple was still open and you could see it and it's on large stilts over the cliff. Lots of different layers of pencil on those flowers. Okay, here is a little pigeon outside Meguro Station. I was just waiting for some friends to come by, so I was sketching the pigeon that was walking by me as I sat on the steps waiting. And here I've just sketched some people on the train. I only recently painted this one as well, but the sketch was done a long time ago. Uh, next up is of a YouTuber and artist called Bokeh. She does amazing work and I made a video of creating this piece so you can go back one of my first videos um, and have a look at it. And here we have some people from Reddit. There's a subreddit, uh, Reddit is a social media site and the subreddit Reddit gets drawn is a really cool concept. I only just recently stumbled across it where people post photographs and you can do sketches of them in any style. So I've done these guys here. And then the final drawing is also from Kyoto. It's from a train station where an artist had put up an art display where different animals were dressed as different Japanese characters. And I didn't have much time so I just quickly sketched out her samurai fish, so samurai flying fish. So these flying fish here had become samurais with the samurai sword and then the sash over them. I've changed the style quite a bit. She used a quite different style, but um, it still makes me remember that artist and that work is very, very cool. And then at the end, I've just done this recently. So I'm not sure of the exact date I started it. I have put down all the details that I can remember from each page and hopefully that means that I will not forget. And thank you for watching my sketchbook tour or arigato. That's the end of my tour here and hopefully I'll get to show you another sketchbook quite soon. I don't know, it takes me a long time to do sketchbooks, especially I tend to paint um, on just pieces of watercolour paper instead of in my sketchbook.
And I often just take my sketchbook when I'm out going somewhere. As you can see from these sketches, they're from different places that I've been to mostly. It might take some while before I get to the next sketchbook is all I mean. Before you go, if you could like and comment and subscribe or hit that little notification bell so you won't miss out on any other future videos, I would super appreciate it, especially if you hit like and subscribe. It really encourages me to make more videos for you and makes it easier for other people to find my content. All right, I'm gonna go now. I'll see you guys soon for another art adventure. Bye.